Spend an afternoon in the company of those who value social niceties. I can struggle against you, no longer. Mr. Darcy! With people who know the importance of a good upbringing. You have a rebellious disposition. Crushing is what it was. The Saturday matinee double bill. David Copperfield and Pride and Prejudice. A frightfully English afternoon. Hollywood style. Beginning next Saturday at 12.30 on BBC Two. On March the 4th, 1933, a man who couldn't walk began to lead a crippled country. It was just unthinkable that a person in a wheelchair could be elected president of the United States. A man of privilege who became a champion of the people. The entire country decided he was the savior. Who overcame personal tragedy to guide a nation through two of the most difficult periods in its history. He was leading the free world against Adolf Hitler, and it wasn't at all clear that we were going to win. In a four-part documentary, BBC Two tells the story of America's most remarkable president. Everybody loved FDR begins tonight at five past eight on BBC Two. This is BBC Two. It's day one of this year's World Championship Snooker. And now with all the action from Sheffield, here's David Vine. championships what it's all about and um, you know if I was to, to equal the, the record of six set by Stephen Ray Rudin it'd be fantastic but um, you know the ultimate ambition is to win seven or more. Scotland Stephen Hendry Embassy World Snooker Champion five times in the last six years odds on favorite again for the title but the chasing pack are hot on his heels. There's fellow Scott John Higgins who's got the chance of becoming the youngest ever world champion. And the same applies to this unpredictable genius. Could 96 be Ronnie O'Sullivan's year? There's a third Scottish contender, Alan McManus, winner of the Thailand Open a month ago. And what about Nigel Bond, last year's runner-up and this year's most recent winner at the British Open? Emotional intensity can win the title. Peter Ebden is high on the list of contenders. Welshman Darren Morgan seems to have broken free from his inhibitions, winning his first big title at the Irish Masters. In Hendry's half of the draw, there's the smiling John Parrott, 91 world champion, and winner of two big events already this season. And if you've won the world title six times already, you can have fancy your chances again. Steve Davis certainly does. Let's not forget who could. The man who suffered so much here in Stephen Hendry's hands, the most popular figure in the modern game, Jimmy White. And the 17-day marathon for snooker's greatest prize begins here at the Crucible Theatre in Sheffield today. Yes, a lot of questions and we'll have the answers for you over the next 17 days. A very good afternoon and welcome to over 100 hours of coverage exclusively here on BBC television of this 21st Embassy World Professional Snooker Championship. The final actually begins a fortnight tomorrow. Sure, you know the formula by now. We've got the top 16 players in the world up against the 16 who've come through some pretty long and arduous qualifiers. There's a the lineup, top half of the draw. Hendry up against Jason Ferguson from Mansfield. Ferguson's making his second appearance here at Sheffield and highlights of their very interesting first session coming up in this programme. David Rowe plays Gary Wilkinson. Ken Doherty could be on course to meet Hendry in the quarterfinals, but he's got to beat Nick Terry to start with. Darren Morgan could be a handful here following that Irish Masters win. Scotland's Drew Henry is his first opponent. 
Thailand's James Watner. He'll be hoping his disappointing season picks up a bit this week. Jimmy Mickey is making his crucible debut. So is Anthony Hamilton, who meets the informed Nigel Bond. Now, Dave Harold and Neil Fold set off this afternoon. News of that one a little later on. And tomorrow, John Parrott plays the fellow Liverpudlian Rod Lawler. Bottom half of the draw, well, I think this is even tougher. Ronnie O'Sullivan there begins against Elaine Robidoux. The winner will meet Tony Drago or Steve James. News of that one in this programme. The two Scots, Higgins McManus, they're on course for a cracking second rounder if they can get through their opening games. Jimmy White, well, the most important game, I think, almost of his life against Ewan Henderson. There's another crucible newcomer, because if Jimmy loses, he's out of Snooker's top 16, and that means so much. The winner goes on to meet Peter Ebden or Dean O'Kane. That match coming up in this program as well. And two former champions down there near the bottom, Terry Griffiths, the 79 winner. He plays the fourth of the Sheffield New Boys, that's Jamie Burnett. And, of course, Mr Davis, the six times champion, who begins on Monday against his old rival, Willie Thorne. So Monday, the day of the golden oldies. Well, let's start with a man who's golden, but he's certainly not old, the defending champion. What is there I can tell you about him you don't already know? He's, uh, last time he was beaten here, 91. That was in a quarter final when Steve James beat him. He hasn't lost a match since then, 20 on the trot. He's taken home over a million pounds in prize money just from the crucible alone. He is very much the odds-on favourite, of course. Different story for Jason Ferguson. You haven't seen too much of him. 26, he comes from Mansfield. Uh, he came here in 92 and he lost 10-8 to Neil Folds. He's played Hendry three times. He's never beaten him. And I can tell you he's won only two frames in those three previous matches. So very much the underdog, Jason Ferguson. Well, it's the best of 19, first to 10. First frame, very scrappy. Hendry really wasn't it in at all. And Jason Ferguson took the opener. So we join it with Ferguson, one up, breaking off for the second. As I say, best of 19 right at the very start. The long match is the trademark of the World Championships. Dennis Taylor and Clive Everton, your commentators on this one. One. Uh, very good opening pot from Stephen. ball just ran a little bit further than Stephen intended but uh, the little cannon onto the green still means that he can pot the green and get back to the reds and that's inch perfect Four. he's on the red next to the black that will just clear the, the black a little more Twenty. Just picking off the uh, loose reds at the moment. Twenty one. There's only really uh, one more red available, the one to the left of the uh, bunch of reds. The other one's a little bit awkward to the right of the pink there. Twenty-eight. And he's played that to perfection. He's got the angle now on the blue and 
go into the pink, I feel, because uh, there's not much chance of the in off in the corner pocket, which can happen sometimes. He's going to be unlucky. Very unlucky. 34. Yes, disappointing that. Went into the reds about as well as he could have done, but uh, you can't ensure against chance. He's taking it on. That's a great shot. There was no easy safety shot on, so that was a super pot in the middle pocket there. And this uh, has all come from that bad break off uh, Clive at Jason Ferguson after winning the first frame under hit his break off shot and uh, all you can do is sit and watch. Three. Stephen Hendry has concentrated fiercely on this break. You could never call him a slow player, but he's just been just a little more measured. Just taking his time a little more around the table. 50. Focusing his concentration to the maximum. 51. Fifty-eight. Fifty-nine. He didn't look very comfortable in the opening frame. He's certainly in full flow in this second. But I think Stephen Hendry does relish these longer matches. 66. Yes, the circuit's staple fare is best of nine, so if you lose the first frame, and even worse, the first couple of frames, you're in a little bit of trouble, but to lose the first frame of the best of 19... 74. ...is not really all that serious. tricky little ones along the cushion. 52. And the perfect angle. He did have a look at one of the reds near the pink if it would pot in the corner, but he'll, he'll go into them now. Second frame. Looks like it's going to be the first century break. 97. 98. The 339th competitive century of Hendry's career.
104 on the play Stephen Hendry. So with that break at 104, Stephen Hendry levels at one all. Yeah, well, that was better for the champion, but it didn't stay that way because from one all, Ferguson took the next two. So at the first interval, the underdog led the champion three frames to one. Although after the interval, Hendry took frame five with an excellent 118 clearance, Ferguson regained his two-frame lead, four frames to two. Remember, it's the first of ten in all. Well, into the next frame they play, and although Hendry is ahead, nothing's looking easy for him today. Uh, this is a good shot. The red was on the cushion, so Hendry used the ricochet effect to keep the cue ball down near the balk line. It's a bit awkward though, he's taking the white away from the yellow ball, the angle he's got on the, uh, the blue here. So he needs one good pot here and he's in with a good chance and... Six. He's got an angle to get round onto the green. Eight. Just overcooked it a little bit. Clearance to blue needed. Very nicely held, the cannon. Eleven. Might be a little bit unfortunate though, Clive. I think it's gone a bit too close to the cushion. I think he can still pot it, but uh, it just depends whether he can get enough side on the cue ball to get it up towards the blue. Jason. fraction away there of taking a three frame lead he still might do that but uh, just a fraction away there yes he was unlucky to cannon the brown so close to the cushion I thought he judged the cannon from the green perfectly Safety from Hendry. Concentrated primarily on getting the cue ball on the balk cushion. Ferguson can only clip the edge of the brown if indeed he can do that. Well, he was looking at coming off the side cushion, but surely he's got to go up the table and uh, back down over the pink spot and just hope for the best. He's going the more difficult way here to hit the brown. <laughs> He'll settle for that. That's not a good shot from Stephen. He's got the brown safe, but uh, there's a slight chance that Jason might be able to, uh, to get a snooker here. I do 
do believe there's a gap through to the Bryant. The test, this is for the world number one. Just look at that shot he's got. Foul, Jason Ferguson, four. Well, that's the end of frame and everything going wrong for the world number one at present. He's got a fight in his hands now, Clive. Yes, if uh, Ferguson puts brown and blue, as he should, then uh, Henry would need a snooker. Four. Nine. He wasn't bothering about the positional side of the shot there, just making sure of the blue. Now he glances at the scoreboard. He's got to be a little bit careful still. Yes, only one snooker required by Hendry. Nine, Jason Ferguson. But if Hendry doesn't get that snooker, Ferguson will be 5-2 up. The black's in a good spot to get a snooker. But will Stephen Hendry get the opportunity to play the snooker? No way that uh, Hendry could have attempted to leave a snooker there. He just tried to keep the pink safe, but this pink isn't safe, and uh, there's no fear in Ferguson's mind. It didn't matter if he missed it. In fact, he's potted it. Jason Ferguson leads Stephen Hendry by five frames to two. Not peculiar, Stephen Hendry, so far today. The only two frames he'd won so far, he'd had century breaks. He nearly got another one in the next frame. He had cleared with a 91 to pull back to just 3-5 behind, one to play today. Thank you. So a very important frame for both players. One more to play in this afternoon session and the match to be played to a finish tonight. Well, Stephen obviously couldn't see a, an easy safety shot on and uh, took the pot on, but uh, the result is not what he expected. This red that's on into the right corner is not a lot of use to Jason because the pink and black are tied up, otherwise he would take that one on.
Juan. Nice little nudge in the yellow there. Well, he might attempt to bring the black into play if he's got a nice angle on the red into the left corner right. and he can just nudge on to the red that's next to the black. It all depends on the angle he has. Oh, little noise there from, I think someone's false teeth must have fell out. Jason noticed it. Six. So he hadn't cut quite the angle to bring the black into play, but uh, still sitting pretty well here. Tried yeah. to leave the right angle that time on the red just above the black. Twelve. Didn't quite manage it, so... Had to come round again for blue. Off an alternative red. Seventeen. Eighteen. He's developed the black nicely now. And this is a good opportunity. Twenty-five. Thirty-three. Thirty-four. Well, this is a good performance in this final frame here from Jason Ferguson. Just under hit his positional shot slightly. 41. The red's still on, but he's got a cannon into the little bunch of reds. And that's the last thing that he wanted, was to leave the cue ball near the side cushion. The pink's on, the black's on. But they're not straightforward. <coughs> A lot of pressure on the next shot for Jason Ferguson. If it goes in, you'd expect him to win the frame. He's already 42 in front. If he misses it, just look at the reds. Fifty. That was such a good pot on the black. It's uh, fifty-seven. Got a few more reds to pot yet before he's safe. Fifty-eight. 
Sixty-four. Well, uh, Clive, Jason Ferguson's going to have about uh, five hours or so, five, five and a half hours to think about the session he's played this morning, to continue this evening to the finish of this match. And he'll uh, probably relax watching a bit of television, Seven. thinking that Stephen Hendry made two century breaks, a 90 break, and he's beating him 6-3. 71. Yes, I think uh, he's got to take the afternoon to take on board the enormity of what he's doing, or what he may do this evening. 70. He's still going to need to win four more frames out of ten. 77. And that's certainly no formality. Well, I think if you had have told him that uh, about nine o'clock this morning, uh, Clive, he would have been absolutely delighted. But he's, uh, he's performed well, and every credit to him. 84. 85. Hendry has been very subdued for most of the morning. 85. Ferguson has played through his early nerves. He's won all the scrappy frames. 91. And could now polish off the session with a century, even though position on this last red isn't all that easy. 98. Beautifully played. Ninety-nine. <laughs> Ferguson showing us just what a good player he is. When he can feel relaxed and fluent. One hundred and four. Yeah, and it's nice for Jason to be able to show the uh, the public just how well he can play. Been a pro six years. 107. And to be able to do this in front of the cameras and in the Embassy World Championship, he'll be over the moon. 116. Stephen Hendry made two centuries and a 91. So those were the only three frames the defending champion won. And it's Jason Ferguson who finishes off the session with a clearance of 129 to lead by six frames to three at the interval. So a big story developing here on day one of the 1996 Embassy World Championship. Just remind you that's played to a finish tonight, best of 19, first to 10. You will see if you join us here, our programme tonight on BBC Two is at 9.30. Another match has reached its halfway stage today. That's between Tony Drago and Steve James. And I can show you the score. 
Tony Drago, eight Steve James, one Steve James, a former world semi-finalist, of course. Tony Drago playing very well, knocked in an excellent break of 115 in that first session. That's played to a finish tomorrow morning. In fact, it's the same half of the draw as what Ronnie O'Sullivan, and John Higgins, Jimmy White, and Steve Davis. That's in that half of the draw. John Virgo, a very interesting session between the, the champion and the newcomer. What do you make of it all? Well, I'm, I'm a great believer that uh, when you play in the world number one here at the Crucible Theatre, you know, uh, just to play well, uh, you'd be happy with that. Because mm. you've got the nerves and, and, and nobody expects Jason to do well. Mm. Not only has he done well, at the end of that frame, he potted that tremendous yeah. black, got a tremendous break. So if he's not feeling on top of the world now, and I think Stephen's got a big job tonight. Of course, for both of them, only this little short gap, because as you say, they come out tonight. There's not a question of sleeping on it and thinking no, about it. No, they just no. come out and start again. And I think that will uh, suit Jason mm. probably better than that, you know, because uh, if, if he did have to sleep over and say finish it tomorrow, he probably couldn't have slept tonight. What did you think of Stephen Hendry today? Because as we're saying, unless he put in a big break and a big mm. clearance in a couple of centuries, he seemed all at sea. He was missing a lot by a long way. Yeah, well, I think he's been doing a lot of that this season. I mean, people say that he doesn't win many scrappy frames. He either gets it and wins it with a big break. And uh, I think that's shown again today. Mm. And uh, you've got to win scrappy frames. Having said that, he's the world champion. He's the world number one. And he's not going to go out without, down without a... Oh. a a fight, but uh, I think he's got a big job on his hands. Well, he's got to win tonight's session, what is it, 7-3? 7-3, seven, three seven, three, yeah. I think the first four frames are going to be important. I think if uh, Jason can win two of those, uh, then it'd be 8-5, mm. and he's only two frames away from the winning line. Mm. Just two frames away from the winning line. I know, line. that's a long way. That I could know. be a long two furlongs. No, <laughs> but, but he impressed me today, <laughs> yeah. and particularly last fl frame, yeah. he really looked good. Okay. Thank you, John. And uh, as I say, BBC Two tonight at 9.30. Right the way through, you'll know and see what happens. Another very interesting match starting out here this afternoon. Peter Ebden and Dean O'Kane. Peter Ebden now one of the hop hottest properties in the game, ranked number 10. He's provisionally up to number 4 in the world and a very, very exciting player indeed. Dean O'Kane from New Zealand dropping down the rankings a bit, but he's produced some good matches here in the past in the Crucible. Some of his best performances have been here. And in fact, in the opening frame, it went to O'Kane, 73-7 to lead 1-0. Then uh, Peter Ebden got the cue arm going and uh, to take the next three in a row and in fact he really got it going he had a magnificent break of 144 in frame three you may well have seen it live all the way through in grandstand earlier on this afternoon peter ebden 144 and leading at the interval over dino kane three frames to one so that's the match we'll go to now we'll join the very next frame your commentators dennis taylor and ray edmonds and it should be it is peter ebden to break off three one up Peter Ebden, who gets away in this first frame after the mid-session interval. Blue ball. And that looks perfect for the red, just to the left of the Six. black, which will open a path to that black, obviously, to the right corner. And this is a pretty good chance again. Six. 
7. Very smoothly, as Peter Ebden. Twenty-two. Thirty. Well, I don't think Peter played for the red to the middle. I think he wanted the cue ball a little further down the table for the red for the corner because it's a rather more difficult pot than it perhaps looks on the screen. And, uh, can't do too much with the cue ball without using a lot of power and that makes the shot more difficult. Oh, so now he's 45. not too close to black. And uh, although he's got the angle to get into the reds, this is not an easy pot. But it was made to look easy. And Peter Ebden carrying on where he left off before the interval. And every chance of making a lot more points here yet. Yes, he went into the reds beautifully there, didn't he, Ray? And uh, the white carried on through the reds. So it was an excellent shot. 
Sixty. Sixty-six. So the lead 66 points, a possible 75 on the table. So this red and the colour still required. another nice little cannon here. Seventy four. Seventy five. Eighty two. Well, this has been another excellent break. He's already had a one four four which is uh, easily the highest break so far and well possible 141 here and then to get two breaks of 140 plus on the first day of a 17 day championship 83 just uh, demonstrates the quality of play already this year Ninety. Ninety one. That's right. And when he made that break of 144, the balls were in virtually a similar position to this. He had one red safe on that side cushion, and he decided to drop in behind it on that occasion and went on to make a 144. I wonder will he do exactly the same thing 
98. You might try and move the red off this shot, pop the red and screw into the other red. Depends on the angle. Well, he tried it. 99. He's finished okay because he's just got the perfect angle on the pink to drop behind the red, so a little bit fortunate. This, this is a very difficult red. If he plays this at pace, he's got no margin of error whatsoever. He would normally screwed on for the blue but I think he wants to get another 140 break he knows he can't beat his 144 but as you said Red to make two breaks of 140 in your opening match would be something special but he sacrificed 106. An 140 break but it's still going to be a brilliant clearance this One eleven. One hundred and thirteen. Dino Kane will be uh, pretty philosophical about this. He's done precious little wrong. One hundred and sixty. Could well have been two all at the interval. And uh, he's just having to sit and, well, I suppose admire this uh, break building from Peter. 120. So there's going to be another big cheer from this near capacity audience watching this this Saturday afternoon and it would be deserved. Another great clearance from Peter Abdon takes him further into the lead. Four frames to one in front. Well, impressive is an understatement. Look at that, 144, 138, seven centuries already today. We're only about halfway through uh, the first day. Stephen Hendry a couple, but of course he's 6-3 down and had to struggle tonight to stay in the championship. But Peter Ebden certainly the man. Dave Harold's got the 1-2-3 there and updating on that match, he's playing Neil Folds. They're two all at the moment. So seven centuries already at the moment. No doubt at all that Peter Ebden is very much the man in form. So that's the man we're going to have a look at now. Playing here this afternoon live they're into just the next frame that's frame six and there's a score it's 44 13 in ebden's favor just breaking down oh look at that look at that but he really Peter seems Ebden, to be super cool 44. super confident he would be the two big breaks i think uh, he'll be ray evans well i thought there was going to be another big break from peter there david but as you saw it just came and sorry missed that red he got that chance from Dino Kane taking on a a very, very difficult One. black when he was uh, hampered badly. And I thought it was going to cost him the frame, but he's got a chance here. Although he's not come ideal on the black. Left it a little more difficult than uh, you would have liked when you've been sat in the chair for quite a while. Yeah, he looked a little bit annoyed with himself, Dean, there, uh, when he played that bad you positional know, shot there. <laughs> I 
He's been queuing well this afternoon. It's just that Peter Ebden has uh, been queuing that much better. shot there he knew he was going to cannon the other red into a potable position That was just uh, a little bit careless from Peter. He knew he was going to cannon into the red, but he was expecting to leave an easy pink into the middle. Now let's just see how well Peter Ebden is queuing. He's certainly full of confidence. He's taking on the long blue. was in the pocket before he got up from the stroke there. Twelve. So a very, very confident Peter Ebden at present. So with a 43 point lead, he just wants a colour and one more red to virtually assure himself of this frame. And uh, I think the most impressive thing about Peter this afternoon has been that his positional play, which sometimes is a bit loose, um, has been an inch perfect most of the afternoon. That rear bad one on the blue a couple of shots ago, recovered with a real good pot. But playing very controlled snooker. Yes, Raoul. Let's go back to the, the cloth again. It's mentioned before, it seems to be playing beautifully the, the table. And uh, when you get a cloth as fast as this, and uh, it just, you grow in confidence on it. I, for one, thought that this would be a fairly hard match for Peter Abdon, and it may still turn out to be so, but in this form, he's 22. going to take some holding. Yes, Raya, go back to that second frame again, when uh, he was 54 behind and, and won that frame. It seems to have turned the whole match round, and Peter Ebden is just... Uh, Playing like a dream out there. Twenty-eight. And New Zealand has done precious little wrong. Perhaps that, uh, well, this frame, a couple of bad shots would be the sum total throughout the match. Twenty-nine.
35. Thirty-seven. Forty. Three more frames to play after this one to end this first session. And uh, it's getting pretty desperate for Dino Kane to stop the rot. Forty-four. But he's going to have to pull out something special. Forty-nine. Fifty-five. Can be a very flamboyant player, Peter Ebden, but been all controlled this afternoon. And looks so much better for it. Yes, real quality play from Peter Ebden. We're staying with this live match here this afternoon, just while they're racking up for the next frame. John Virgil. Uh, Peter seems to have slowed down a lot, particularly this afternoon. It's some of the best snooker I've ever seen him play. Oh yes, uh, he's playing tremendous and uh, he's so confident. And as you say, he's taking the time. He's not taking too much time. I think sometimes he does make it a little bit too hard work, but yeah. no, he's got a lovely balance yeah. today and he's really playing well. He's had a very consistent season. He's been getting to sort of quarterfinals, semi-finals, finals. I think he's a bit upset he hasn't got a few more pots on his sideboard. Well, I'm a little surprised he hasn't, but, but when he puts so much into a match, you know, and this is the question mark I would put over Peter. At the end of 17 days here at Sheffield, how much will he have left, yeah, you know? Yeah. Will he hold? Because, I mean, yeah. he is up to number four in the world. He's one of the hottest properties in the business. Oh, and he's a great player. But, you know, it's all about stamina here. And uh, well, if he carries on like that, then uh, he'll take all the beating. As you were saying, when you go out and knock in a 1-4-4, you've proved you can do it to yourself in the world. Oh, yeah. And uh, he's, he's playing as though he doesn't have anything to prove. And he's mm. just going, uh, now can concentrate on winning the match. And... Uh, He's playing really well. You've got to feel sorry for Dino Kane because, mm. of course, when somebody's making those breaks, you're not getting to the yeah. table. So every time you get there, you, you think, I've yeah. got to get this, otherwise it's my last shot. Because Dean said some very good matches at the Crisp. He's played some of his best snooker. He had a great one against Cliff Thorpe. I mean, he's capable of a few pullbacks. He's oh, yes, and I remember the year he got beat by Jimmy White in the yeah. quarterfinal. I mean, at one time, Jimmy looked to be in trouble. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, today, he's just being outplayed by uh, Peter Ebden in sparkling form. Yeah, yeah. In case you've just come in, by the way, the big news, of course, today, which you've been hearing about, I'm sure, is that Stephen Hendry is 6-3 down to Jason Ferguson, very much uh, an underdog, and they play to a finish here tonight to see whether Hendry, the hottest favourite of all time, can stay in the championship. So let's go back now. Peter Ebden there is having the afternoon of his life, I think. I was certainly very, very pleased. He was out at the practice table just a moment or two ago, fully relaxed, leading five frames to one. This is what's happening here at this moment at the Crucible on day one of the Embassy Championship of the World. Peter Ebden, 5-1 up over Dean O'Kane and real quality snooker. Enjoy it with us. And again, a near-perfect break. And, uh, certainly in recent tournaments, break-off had become a very difficult shot to play. Now, Dennis has mentioned the cloth, but certainly in this match, every break-off by both players has pretty well been pinpoint on the back cushion. Maybe something to do with it. And the break-off again has forced the error. And that red past the yellow Peter can get to.
Dangerous. Dean will just be attempting here to uh, screw the white ball and keep it close to that bottom cushion just over behind the yellow and brown there. Screwed it a little bit, and Peter can get back down the table. Well, he was queuing up at that red as if to tell you he was going to put it in off the other red, but his main object is to get the white back down the table. Did he try to put the red in off the other one? Yeah. Miss hit it, but uh, everything's safe. I feel Dino Cain's going to have to play a few more shots like that, leave the white tight in the cushion and just grind a little bit and play himself back into this match. It's not going to be easy, but you can't keep leaving them on for this man. The mood is in it, present. Well, certainly no easy path the cue ball to get back down to the balk area but uh, Peter could try and drop it somewhere in the jaws of this right hand corner shouldn't uh, be in too much trouble from there for that very good strength with the cue ball. Peter's struggling to find a way back down the table. And he's looking to play off the one that's next to the blue. He's not going to put the red in off the blue, is he? The middle pocket? Try that as well. smile to himself there. A double kiss didn't do him any favours, bringing the cue ball back up towards the reds and he's left the one on to the left corner.
not too straightforward for Peter Ebden to find this next red. Rumble. That looks about perfect though. Another couple of inches, the pink would have been in the way, but fine. Judge to perfection. Twenty. Just one red at the back of that uh, pack will go. He'll split one or two others up, I think, as he knocks it in. But not. Twenty-one. Too many have come out, and now he's faced with a very difficult positional shot. gone astray so it'll have to be the safety shot and uh, 26 he's got plenty to aim at here with this safety shot he's got the brown and blue which are nicely placed and uh, the green and yellow are not too bad either so if he can find the path the cue ball he could put Dean in a spot of trouble here. Has to avoid the pink belt. Peter Edden, 26. Well, now the red just to the left of the cluster will go to that left corner, but cue ball's going into the reds. more difficult and bringing the cue ball past the bolt line has left Peter a chance to the right corner
one. Well, that's gone a little bit awkward for the green. It's an easy pot, but uh, can't do much with the cue ball. You can get through to the uh, pink into the middle pocket, and the yellow's available there. hampering him for the green. I can't see any way he could get the white into position for a red. And it looks as if he's he's got a, a, lots of options here. You can play the snooker. I think that's what he might decide on. Peter Edmund won. Too difficult to get into the cluster of breads off the right hand side cushion, but every chance he would leave a red. So it looks as if he's uh, so it looks like being a three four cushion escape. Four. Well, it was a dangerous shot. He had to play it at dead pace just to get to that red on the cushion. And although a miss is being called, there's no question that Peter will take this red on. bogged down. He'd been so smooth when everything was going so swimmingly, but now I don't really see the big problem. I don't see how he can avoid finishing on the green or one of the those colours down there. One. <coughs> so, choices. any kind of trouble whatsoever and now the kisses are Six. going wrong just the wrong pace but he'll play through this it happens
the red won't go past the green, obviously, but this red to the left-hand side is a possibility. And uh, he's not liable to leave anything easier than the one he's taken on.